Hello, my great stars. Welcome to another exciting and fun field class on quantitative reasoning. In this class, we are going to be looking at exercise 16. And exercise 16 has four examples. All right. And uh, in the first example in exercise 16, we are going to be looking at the concept of addition, subtraction, square of numbers, which I'm going to emphasize, and the square root, which is the opposite of square of numbers. Now let's look at this table. All right, this is a table of square of numbers from 1 to 20. All right, so we need to learn the square of numbers from 1 to 20 because it is going to help us to understand this exercise better. Now, when you say 3 squared, we write a 3 and a small 2 on top. And so how do we break this down? It means we are going to multiply 3 in two places. All right, so 3 squared is 3 times 3. And what is that answer? 9, of course. So the square of 3 is 9. Now let's look at the first page, which is example 1. As you can see, it has three numbers. The 4, the 3, and the 32. Okay? Now, if we choose to find one of these numbers using the other two, for example, the 32, then we'll make use of the 4 and the 3. So we are going to be looking at this concept on the board. Let's go to the whiteboard. First, we need to find the square of the two numbers, the square of 3 and the square of 4. Okay, so, and we add these squares up. That is, 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that's going to give us a 9. The 9 is for the 3 squared and the 16 for the 4 squared. So when we add up this, we are going to get 25. 25. Now again, we have to add the three numbers without squaring them. All right? So we have 3 plus 4 equals 7. Then when we add this 7 to the previous 25, our answer is no doubt 32. So when we add up, we get our 32. So that is how we get the 32. So back, let's see if we want to get the 4. We need to make use of the 3 and the 32. So how do we start? We start with the 32, all right? So first of all, we are going to find the square of 3 because we are looking for the 4. So the square of 3 is initially subtracted from 32. So when we are done subtracting 3 squared from 32, we subtract the 3 itself, all right? So 32 minus 3 squared is going to be what? 32 minus 9, that is 23. Then we also subtract 3 from the 23. So when we do this, we are going to get a 20, all right? So once we have 20, we think of a square that is right below 20 and that is 16 okay so the square root of 16 is to find the number that multiply itself to give you 16 that is no doubt 4 because 4 times 4 is 16 so this is how we get the 4 to get the 3 we follow the same procedure all right so now let's move to the second example in this class that is example number two, which will make use of the concept of addition and the concept of subtraction. Now let's look at the picture. All right. 
This kite shape has four numbers. The four numbers are different, but two are always the same. These are the two numbers I circle. They must always be the same. So if you have one, you can easily find the other. All right. So you can see. But the other two numbers, the eight and the other four, we are going to attempt to find those ones. For example, to find the eight, we need to make use of the two fours on top and on the right hand side. All right. So that is to say for the top, we have four plus four. That gives us an eight. So you can as well add the fours on the right hand side. Now, if we want to get the other four, all right, so we make use of the eight and the four on the left hand side. In other words, we subtract them. So we have eight minus four. That gives us four. So we always subtract those two numbers to get the number on that four position. So that is it for that example. Now let's look at example number three. In example three, we are going to be making use of four concepts, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, this is the picture. We have four numbers inside a circle with four quadrants. The largest is the 27. To find this 27, we must make use of the number on the left-hand side, top and bottom. What are we going to do with 3 and 9 to get 27? Of course, we are going to multiply them. So when we multiply 3 by 9, we get 27. That is to say, multiply the number in those positions to get the number in the 27 position. To get the 9, there are two ways. We can either make use of the 3 and the 27 or the 3 and the 6. Now let's look at the first option. So make use of the 27 and the 3. It simply means we are going to divide them. 27 divided by 3 is going to give us a 9. So that is why we have 9 in that position. Alternatively, we can add the number 6 and 3. And the answer is 9. See, we can get 9 by adding the number in the 6 and the 3 positions. Alright? So, how do we get 6? Any number in that position of 6? We simply subtract the number in the 3 and 9 position. So, we have 9 minus 3. The result is 6. So this is how we get the 6. And finally, to get the 3, we make use of the 9 and the 6. Of course, we are going to subtract them. So we have 9 minus 6. So what is the result? Of course, it's 3. So that is how we get the number in that 3 position. All right, and finally, we are going to look at the example number four, which uses addition and subtraction. It's a triangle, and uh, the numbers are connected. For example, the 10 on the base of the triangle are connected, and the number on top and inside the triangle are also connected. Now, how are they connected? When you add the number on top and the number inside the triangle, the result you get is the same as when you add the number on the base of the triangle. For example, 12 plus 8 is 20 and 10 plus 10 will also give you a 20. You see? So this enables us to get any result we want. For example, to find the 8, what do we do? We go to the bottom or the base and add up the 10. 
okay what we have there is 20 so what do we do we try to subtract the 12 from the 20 that we've gotten and what we get is 8 so this is how we get the 8 well if we wish to get the 12 we follow the same procedure we use in getting the 8 all right and so you make use of the two tens and the eight you will get the 12 but just follow the same procedure all right so now if we wish to get the 10 on the left hand side so we'll start with the numbers in the center of the triangle which is 8 and the 12 what it gives us is 20 so what do we do with 20 we try to subtract the 10 from the 20 and what we get is 10 so that is how we get the 10 so we do the same for the other 10 all right hope you had fun learning in today's class and do your assignments and quiz i'll see you in the next class thanks for watching and bye